Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Ania Golu. Now it's Africa Tech Week starting from today. The event is billing itself as the biggest ever such gathering that Africa has ever seen. It's a remote event and it's aimed at bridging tech inequalities on the continent and encouraging disadvantaged communities to take up science and technology as well as engineering and mathematics. It's also trying to help Africa recover in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Its impact on education in Africa has been enormous. Nearly 70 million children were prevented from going to school by the virus and they have also not been able to study online because they are either not connected to the internet or they don't have the gadgets things like computers iPads digital phones etc Africa Teen Geeks since its inception, Africa Teen Geeks has grown to be the largest computer science non-profit organization in Africa. Through its strategic partnership with the University of South Africa and the Department of Basic Education, ATG has the key ingredients as an influential organization with strong social impact. I can't wait for you to meet my newest relative, working at the Department of Basic Education, Zora. Zora is an AI-powered virtual being with various abilities, who serves as a teacher assistant and a personal tutor to the learners on the new coding and robotics curriculum that is being piloted this year. Need to Code, it's a program that teaches young girls without access to computers, coding through knitting. Girl Geek, another program by ATG, which aims at increasing the pipeline of girls who pursue STEM careers. ATG hosted the Girl Geek Summit with most influential women in technology who engaged and inspired our future female leaders. Africa Teen Geeks, inspire, equip, and educate. And of course, uh, one of the voices that attendees will hear at that Mammoth Africa Tech Week conference is that of Lindiwe Matlali. She's the founder and CEO of Africa Teen Geeks. That's the video you just saw there. She's been gearing up for Tech Week and she joins me now from Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, good to see you, although your, your internet uh, doesn't look absolutely brilliant, I have to say, with rather undermines the idea of a big sort of tech week and all the connectivity that's being talked about. But first of all, tell us more about this Africa Tech Week conference and what makes it the biggest gathering of tech leaders and digital entrepreneurs ever in Africa. Thank you so much for having me, and I apologize about the internet. I'm actually at the airport. I'm flying to Cape Town, so I had to, yes. But, um, you know, the, the plan um, for, for Africa Tech Week is about bringing together um, Africans across all the continent and discuss the opportunities that are available in technology to make sure that we can start collaborating and also create um, a different Africa where we are not just the consumers of technology, but also um, the developers of, of technology. And looking at also how we can invest in each other and, 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 and so that we can foster entrepreneurship in the continent as well. And for me personally, it's about um, bringing African kids and start to expose them to the African um, tech ecosystem as early as possible so that we can raise their aspirations, but also inspire them um, to actually you know, start creating all the platforms that we are using, but are not creating in the continent. And uh, the, the big focus of this meeting um, is recovery in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Tell us how that has affected uh, children in, in Africa and what you're trying to do to reverse that. 
I mean, you've already touched on that, that, um, you know, we, we in, sub, in sub-Saharan Africa alone, um, you know, almost 70 million children have not been able to go back to school, um, you know, um, due to, um, to, the, to the pandemic, and they have not been able to private online. So I think for me, a part of the discussion that as Africans we need to have is, it's not just about looking about at how we can create offline, um, you know, uh, 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 technologies that the kids can, we need to look at how do we connect Africa? Because it's not the first time that as a continent we deal with the pandemic. You know, it, 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 you know, this is the first time I suppose it affected the world. But, you know, if you think about what happened during Ebola, um, when Ebola was a crisis in West Africa, a lot of children were, were staying at home. It didn't make a big, you know, headlines because it was only, you know, um, in, a, in a small part of Africa um, where those kind of, 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 of problems are sub- supposedly expected to happen. But I think the discussion that we need to have as Africans is how do we start working together and collaborating and making sure that we can connect Africa and make sure that our children don't continue to suffer um, the, the consequences of not investing in infrastructure. Because currently what COVID has done is really exposed the uh, you know Africans and also the, we are dealing with, with the consequences of not investing enough in, in, in technology um, infrastructure specifically um, internet connectivity. Right, because I I was looking at your core mission, um, your Teen Geek um, organization, and uh, your aim is to eliminate those barriers, uh, which are clearly considerable. Um, I mean, is that how you intend to do it, to try and spur African governments to invest more in technology and education and that sort of thing? That's what we are, we are already doing because we, you know, we can't do it alone. And unfortunately, a lot of the investment in infrastructure has to be done by government. So in South Africa, what we have done as Africa Team Geeks, we basically de- help the Department of Basic Education to develop the coding and robotics curriculum. And now we are helping them in implementing it. And a big part of the work actually that we are doing is to make sure that every school um, in South Africa has a computer lab and is is connected. What has happened during um, the pandemic was that a lot of our um, uh, our internet um, suppliers, what they've done, they've zero rated all the the webs the education website. But that has not addressed the problem because a lot of poor children do not even have the devices for them to um, to be able to connect. While we talk about you know the the high um, cell phone penetration in Africa. It's not, you know, your smartphones, you know, the good smartphones like the, you know, the iPhones and, and the Samsung that, they, you know, a lot of the children have the basic, um, you know, smartphones that doesn't necessarily, um, and, you know, allow them to be able to learn online. So it's, I think for me, it's really about making sure that we, we work with government to bring together, I mean, civil society and private companies and make sure that we can start investing and in, in the infrastructure, specifically in our schools, to make sure that we can start creating, you know, a generation that can not just be ready for the fourth industrial revolution, which is already here, but to be able to participate. So um, in a nutshell, that is really a big part of what we are doing. We are making sure that every school in, you know, uh, studying with South Africa, but uh, in the continent actually has a computer lab and um, is a functional Wi-Fi. And we can't do that without government, unfortunately. Absolutely. I know that South Africa isn't as badly hit by a lack of connectivity and equipment as other parts of sub-Saharan Africa. Where would you say are the countries with the least connectivity and where you face the greatest challenge? And how do you intend to overcome the challenges in those countries? Um, countries like um, obviously Zimbabwe, which is our immediate neighbor, um, is probably I would say one of the struggles. But I think it's not also just that. It's not just you know connectivity alone, but we also have issues with um, um, with um, electricity. So if if you don't have electricity, you can't have internet. 
So those things also, I mean, the um, the, the the problems that we, we have to deal with um, are much bigger than just getting a device. It's really making sure that the infrastructure is there and is conducive for um, for us to be ready. Because I mean, every year we talk, I think for us in South Africa in 2019, it was the year where the president launched the, you know, the presidential fire commission in, in which I serve and it was really excited this for and then that's fourth industrial revolution that is coming. And um, when he took over as the chairperson of the uh, of the AU, there was a lot of discussion about that. But you know, unfortunately, as Africans, we we are so good at identifying our, our problems, but not so great at actually coming up with solutions. And I think what COVID nineteen has exposed that is, is exactly that. And we can't wait for somebody from outside to come and save us. There's no savior that is going to come. And we can see also the fact that we haven't invested enough in STEM in general. Um, we don't have enough scientists, and that's why we are sitting and, and, and begging for the vaccine. So, you know, thank God that, you know, the, 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 the coronavirus is not hit us as bad as it does India or, or Italy. But if that has happened, you know, it's very, for even with South Africa supposedly being better than the continent, we're still very, very low. I think we've only vaccinated around 350 or 60,000 people. That is not enough for, to have the head immunity. So investing in, 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 in the human capital, invest, investing in science, investing in STEM in general, is really important to get Africa from, you know, from just always being the, the continent that is always begging for somebody to come and help. And we know that hasn't happened and it's not going to happen unless we rise up on our own. That's a very good point. And, and I think a lot of people would agree that it, it's time to move away from the begging bowl to taking charge of what actually happens on the continent. And part of that is taking charge of technology. So who's going to be taking part in this Africa Tech Week conference? Lots of big tech companies will be there, one assumes, as well as possibly government representatives and so on have a lot of um, um, amazing speakers including the um you know the the um ceo of zoom and um, we also have my mentor um dr marian crook who's the uh, who's the vice president of engineering in google um we have um Gijima, ppc so there's a lot of um uh, uh, you know, co um, companies, but you know, there's very few African, uh, I mean, companies there. So I think that's something that it built, it brings back to to our um, the discussion around how do we create, you know, big platform or, or big tech companies coming out um, from the continent. Okay, but I, I'm going to ask you to stay with us just a bit longer so we can complete the, the chat with you. We appreciate that you're at the airport and uh, we also appreciate the fact that you stopped over to have a chat with us. Uh, so stay with us. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about Africa Tech Week, billed as the biggest ever such gathering that the continent has ever seen. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyokolo. Now, today sees the start of the biggest ever gathering of tech leaders and digital entrepreneurs Africa has ever seen. And the focus of the online conference is to eliminate the barriers faced by disadvantaged communities in pursuing science, technology, engineering, and maths, and also to help Africa's recovery in the wake of the pandemic. As you know, the virus has devastated education and economies across Africa. Tens of millions of children saw their education drastically curtailed, while millions of businesses were ruined. Well, this year, the attempt to rebuild is continuing, and it's generally accepted that technology has to be at the heart of that recovery. Experts say that technology will be central in equipping young people with the vital skills to successfully compete in an increasingly digital world. And this is a key focus of this year's Africa Tech Week conference. And one of the key speakers at that conference is Lindiwe Mandlali, CEO and founder of African, uh, Africa Teen Geeks, and she is still with me from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Tell us what you're actually going to be saying at that conference. You're one of the key speakers there. 
I actually, um, you know, I was, I will be talking specifically about the importance of, of um, having women in tech. Um, and I'm having a fireside chat with Dr. Marian Croak, who is the, the vice president of engineering at Google, but also the, the black woman credited with developing voice over IP. So um, my discussion with her is really would be around how do we create, you know, the, um, you know, a tech ecosystem that fosters innovation and understanding also with the, the importance of, um, you know, raising, as I mentioned, young people that are, are, are inspired, that have, have high aspirations, because that is really, really important. The children cannot become what they haven't seen. Um, and, then, and also with the importance of exposure in getting them to see role models and specifically, you know, people that look like them that have invented and created something. So that is really what I, I will be talking about. And it's also very much aligned with the mission of Africa Team Geeks to really get children to, to start thinking, seeing themselves as innovators rather than consumers. And I mean, it, it sounds like that there's a lot of work to do going forward. And that the challenge is always that um, these big conferences tend to be, you know, mammoth talking shops and people make promises and all the rest of it. But the challenge is the follow up after such a big conference, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, I think um, for me personally, you know, as with Africa Teen Geeks, we are not um, one of the, we don't believe in just talking. And that's why even with their programs, the way we've designed our programs are not the kind of touch and go where we can say, you know, in one week we reach, you know, one billion children. Well, at the end of it, none of them can 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 write even a line of code. So we, that's not the kind of, um, you know, um, organization that we are. We, we are not a touch and go organization. What we focus on is how do you take a child from I've never touched a computer before to I've created my first game, you know, and also taking them and then exposing them and, you know, to like Silicon Valley, you know, and, and getting them the right support that they need. And that's why for us also, it's about working in the grassroots going to the schools, changing the system, training the teachers, working with governments and making sure that we can we can, we can can have the change that we seek. It, it's not just about talking. As I mentioned earlier, we are really good as Africans in talking and we've been talking, 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 but now we need to have, I mean, for me, I'm hoping that we can have a lot, you know, a, a lot of, of social entrepreneurs in all African countries so that we can start working together and solve the problems. Because one thing I like about social entrepreneurs is that they are already fixing the problems in their communities. So now if we're to work together and look at how, because the, the same problems that, you know, are in Nigeria, that are in South Africa, right? So there's no need that we need to always try to reinvent the wheel. But if we if we cooperate and and and, and look at, for example, the um the 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 newly launched um, African um, trade um, organization to try and enforce a trade within Africa, those are the things that we have to really really focus on, build and make sure that they work. They will only work if we make them work. Yes, and, and um, it, 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 I mean, it, it, it sounds though, and I think you made this point previously, as though much of your work has focused on South Africa. That's where you appear to have achieved the most. But is there any other part of Africa where your presence has been felt in terms of really making a difference or starting to make a difference? Um, yeah, I mean, we have um, started our program in, in Lesotho and, um, you know, I, and we will also be starting actually that we, we would have already started in Zimbabwe had it not been um, for COVID-19. And also we, we actually have a presence in Nigeria, which has been more focused in, 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 in events. And now we are looking at actually um, working with Nigerian um, social entrepreneurs in, in bringing, you know, the work that we've done, but also learning from them and seeing how we can, we can start building um, the ecosystem. And I think for us, obviously, South Africa was a, uh, I would say a pilot, you know, for us to see, because, you know, there's, uh, South, South Africa has huge inequality. So you have Johannesburg Center that has everything that can be any city in the world. And then you have Alexandra or, you know, some parts of Soweto that are terribly poor. 
that you know there's no sanitation there's no um proper electricity we have schools that um uh, have the the state of the art um infrastructure and then you have schools where children are still dying trying to go to to the to the toilet so the um it 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 has all of those kind of you know problems that you see in africa and for us while solving them in south africa and looking at what we can do then is how then we share what we are doing with other african countries and then um, our model is also not to go in in any african country and you know launch an africa team gigs but it's about working with with them um, you know the people people in that kind of so for example as we come into nigeria we are working with um, nigerian ngos because i don't i'm i don't believe that you know i can go and think that and assume just because i'm african i can understand the problems that nigerian have better than a nigerian so what we do we go there and we collaborate and try to see how we can learn learn from each other and make sure that we create the kind of collaboration that will lift um the continent so how can people join this conference if they want to? I mean, do they have to have pre-registered for it or can they just sort of click on a line and get into the, the groove, as it were? Yeah, um, the links are on Africa Tech Week, but they are on our um, um, uh, Africa Team Geeks website as well. Um, those that want to attend um, the session, but it's also been live streamed on Africa Tech Week um, website and their Facebook page has also been um, live streamed on Africa Team Geeks um, Facebook page as well. And, and is there much participation from countries such as Nigeria and Kenya in, in that conference where there are big sort of digital entrepreneurs and so on, certainly aspiring ones? Yeah, I mean, we um, I've seen quite a lot. I mean, there've been also been a lot of engagements that I've had with um, um, Kenyan entrepreneurs and Nigerian entrepreneurs. So um, it's really exciting to see that. Actually, one of the people I know quite well that I've actually engaged with Nigeria that I'm really trying to do a lot with is um, E. The you know the um, he goes by E because I always um, not pronounce his name properly or E.O., the the founder of um, the the co-founder of Andela and and Flutterway. I mean, these are the people that we want our children to know. We want our children to to know what is possible, and we want him to you know and and people like him to be visible and be the the role models that our children can see what is possible so yeah i mean i'm, I'm i've seen quite a lot of that and it's actually exciting to see there also the interest in collaboration and as right. you said earlier what is important now go on Okay, uh, Lindiwe Mandlali, CEO and founder of Africa Teen Geeks. I want to thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's a pity you did so from the airport. Uh, I have to say the quality of uh, the internet there is not very good, but we managed to get the gist of most of what you're saying and what you were talking about in terms of that uh, Africa Tech conference that begins this week. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja, Lagos and South Africa. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.